tell us from back there. Good morning, Mount Vale. Uh, we didn't do good on that. Good morning, Mount Vale. There we go. Now we're awake. How's everybody this morning? We got the sun shining for a little bit. I, I was told that we may have a little bit of rain coming in, but hey, rain is just liquid sunshine, is it not? Uh, I, I didn't have a, a yes back here. Is, is it not? Is it? Okay, we got an amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We've got a couple of announcements. We're getting closer and closer to the revival nights, uh, 10th and 11th and 12th. Uh, I heard somebody yay in back there. That's good. Uh, we got uh, Pastor Jeannie Brown going to be here on the 10th. Uh, 11th is Evangelist John Carter, and the 12th is uh, Tommy Bates. Pastor Tommy Bates going to be here on the 12th. Can't wait to have everybody showing up for uh, uh, revival nights. Uh, also on uh, got a, a wasp. Sorry about that, but I am allergic to them things, and I do not want to get stung. Uh, bingo night is going to be August the sixth uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, that's uh, 6 p.m. August the 6th, bingo night. Even though it's being put on by the senior adult class, everybody is welcome to show up. Uh, have a lot of fun with everybody on the bingo nights. Lots of prizes and uh, some eats uh, going on uh, th those nights. Uh, Unashamed Children's Ministry, monthly night of prayer, uh, August the 26th at 6.30 to 7.30. I know you want to say something about that, but you want to tell us how the VBS went and tell us about the uh, monthly night of prayer? Bible school was great. It was really good. We had a lot of fun. We had four kids get saved. So I'm um, so kids. thankful for that. How about giving the Lord some praise for that? Yes, Amen. I'm so thankful. And um, a lot of seeds sown. We've picked up some kids on the bus that Matt Howe has <clears throat> grace, graciously still picking up and bringing to church so i'm excited to see them hopefully again this morning so we're just thankful our monthly prayer night is is always the last friday night of the month and as of right now it's at seven we may change the time but we don't know yet so but we bring your kids out come and pray with us um, it's not a drop your kids off and leave it's going to bring your kids and let's pray our kids are starting back to school they need a lot of covering from the lord because they're suffering and going through a lot of things that they shouldn't even have to go through and the world is programming them so we need to make sure that we are teaching them god's word word amen to that uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but we we see a lot going on with uh, where we're traveling to and seeing a, a, a lot of uh, differences in our children, the way they're being raised, and they need a good church in their lives. Amen. Uh, I, that's all I have on my, my list here. Is there any announcements that I've uh, left off, uh, anything that's going on? I have another praise report. Uh, during Bible school, uh, I didn't even know them whenever they came, but my nephew's two daughters that I didn't even know where they were at. She's now, Harley's now 16 and Kira is 14. They have started coming and I didn't know it until Tuesday. So I got to meet them again, I guess you could say, cause it's been years since I seen them uh, Wednesday night. So that is awesome. Amen. They, they grew up in a, a really rough lifestyle. They, um, and I hope they ain't watching, but Amen. That is great. 
That is wonderful news. Anytime the good Lord moves upon our family members that we think is lost, that we think that is not going to be able to be moved, God will come in and move on them in our behalf. Amen. 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 If you would, please stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. It, it is a wonderful day. No matter how the clouds may look out there. No matter how the clouds may look in your life. No matter how the clouds may look in somebody else's life. It is time to give the Lord the praise that He deserves. It is time to give the Lord the shout out that He deserves. It is a day that He has made and has brought us into it. And it's time to rejoice. It is time to just to shout out His name and give Him all the praises and glorify His name. What a wonderful place to be. And what a great, great time of day to, to start. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most graciously, Heavenly Father, we give You all the praise and glory. And thank You for waking us up this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, for all of those that, that are watching on Facebook, give them the energy and, and, and give them the, the, the sermon to be where they need to be at today, dear Heavenly Father. Open up a door close to them, dear Heavenly Father, whether it be ours or some other church, but get them in a place, dear Heavenly Father. We ask You of this. We ask You, dear Heavenly Father, be with the praise and worship teams today, dear Heavenly Father, as we lift You up, dear Lord. Be with each and every single speaker today, dear Heavenly Father, as we open up the ears of those, dear Heavenly Father, that is going to listen. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, brighten up the hearts of each and every single person here, dear Lord. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, be with each and every single person that is sick and afflicted. The ones that are out in sin, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, lay your healing touches on each and every single one, dear Lord. We ask you for all of these things through your Son's almighty hands. Amen.
put out for me You broke my chains and set me free You gave it all up on the cross Where would I be if not for I'll keep messing up up here. I need new glasses and I cannot see the cords. The C's look like G's. So sorry for messing up, guys. impossible there's a mountain too high 
No valley too low, there's no fear that I am. He doesn't already know, there's no problem too big. No weapon too strong, there is nothing for God. That's impossible. So I won't be shaken. No, I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains. Oh, it's time to move. is bigger, better, stronger, greater. He's 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 bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. So I won't be shaken. No, I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I'm going to speak to every mountain. Oh, it's time for you to move. Because you see, my God is bigger. He's better. He is stronger. And he's greater. He's bigger and better. Stronger and greater. He's bigger. Better, stronger, greater. He is bigger and he's better, stronger. He's greater, he's bigger and he's better, stronger and he's greater than you. Amen. No mountain too high. No valley too low. Amen. There's no place that our God can go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do for us, God. For every day that you wake us up. For every day that we're able to walk. Lord, even though we can't even walk without you holding our hand. I'm thankful, God, that you're there to hold my hand. I'm thankful, Lord, for the strength that you give me when I am so very weak. For healing and deliverance. For love. And I'm thankful, God, for the blood that you shed so I could have love. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. What a service we would have, God, if we came into this place and you didn't show up. I don't want to be in a service like that, God. Hallelujah, Lord, we desire your presence. We desire your glory in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Almighty, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Is anybody looking for him in, this morning? Not just in his place, but in clouds of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't nobody get nervous. I'm just trying to wait on the Lord. Jerry, if you need to do something, go ahead, but I'm just trying to wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I want to share this with, with you as she's getting. Hallelujah. Brother Philip and I was going to uh, Nashville yesterday to pick up Pastor and. We, we got in, as we always do, we start talking about the Lord. We, we start talking about sermons. And, and of course, we, we pick at each other. And we, we started talking about uh, this, this walking on the water thing that we, we started. And, and it's, the, the emotions started coming over me as he started talking about what Jesus said to Peter about come. And she just mentioned it again about come. And I was talking about taking up the offer. And the scripture started coming to me about, about come. He started talking about the word come. He says so many times in the Bible about come to me. And he said that to Peter by coming out of the boat. Children, he says to us many times in the Bible about come. Come to me. Sister just said, if we would just come to me. Many times we need to leave those things behind that is getting us stand fast and stand still. And we don't stand where He wants us to stand. We don't walk. We don't walk to Him. We don't put those things to the side. We don't put those things to the side that, that is keeping us from where He wants us to be. We need to come. Listen to what He is beckoning us to do. Our children are suffering. Our, our parents are suffering. We are suffering. If we just listen to Him to come. Brother Philip had me in tears just by what he was saying about Peter. Peter just stepped out on the water. He took his eyes off of him for just a second. And then all of a sudden, he, he looked back at him. And he raised back up. Just by that one word, come. Yes, hallelujah. Children, look up to him and go. Because he's always asking you to come. Open up your hearts. He's saying, come. It's one little word. He's knocking on your heart's door. We get cemented in our seats. We get cemented in our homes. We get cemented in our communities. And we never move. We never try to go after those that are lost. When he's yelling at us from a distance saying, come, listen to my word, come, listen to everything that I'm telling you, listen to my word, listen to everything that's going on in this world. It's a barren place. It's like hell out there, but I have got you. Come. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Don't be lost the rest of your life. Come. 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 Every single day that these doors are open, every single time a pastor opens up these, these scriptures that he's going to preach from, these altars should be open. These altars should be full. Because God is calling upon you. Come. Don't stand in your seats. Don't sit still. Don't let your feet stand still. Come. I'm sorry I'm taking up time. Sissy, if you're ready. But come. Listen to the words. Most of all, listen to the words that Jesus said to you. Come. Come, Peter. I'll wait on you. Jesus said it is expedient for me to go away oh but i'll see you another comforter to guide you from day to day so they tarried at your own 
Jesus came forth from the grave. Oh, in that same spirit that raised Jesus up, it's gonna take me home someday. Oh, I can feel his Holy Spirit dwelling deep within. Well, you see, sometimes it feels so gentle. Oh, but then sometimes it's like a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and that same spirit that raised Jesus up from death and the grave. Oh, it's going to raise this old body up. And it's going to take me home someday. Oh, I can feel His Holy Spirit dwelling deep within. Well, sometimes it feels so gentle. And sometimes like a mighty rushing wind. Well, that same Spirit that raised Jesus up from dead. And the grave is gonna raise this old body up and take me home someday. Well, now you see they laid him in an empty tomb, and then they rolled that stone at the door. Oh, they put soldiers there to guard it. You see, they thought they'd done away with my Lord. Oh, but on that third day, Oh, 
My children, do not tarry. I am coming back. My children, I am the one. Seek me. Seek me. My children, praise. Praise aloud. Give him some praise. I have never in my life experienced the experiences that just rushed over me. And Pastor, I, I, I hope you don't mind. I take a couple of minutes. This, this, this is new grounds whenever the Lord speaks to you after, after a, this. And, and it's just new to me I've spoken in tongues before but he's never spoken to me to to interpret it, sister Della will you come take the offering please You know, when she was singing the song, I'm greater, I'm bigger, better than you. And as I was sitting back there and I was listening to that, the devil may come to you as a flood. Well, I want to give you this for instance. Like this morning, my husband got up out of bed and he went to the bathroom. I did not know he had got up out of bed. All of a sudden, I heard somebody cough in our house. I look up and this big old man was standing at the foot of my bed and it scared me. But you know, in that instant, even though I was scared, I knew God was right there with me. So in life, we may face those big battles. We may face those big giants. But come on now, somebody, that God is bigger. He's better than the one that is standing trying to oppress us and depress us and cause us to have all these anxiety. Yesterday, I was at a family function. And as I was sitting there, I'm mid-age, ladies, and you know how it feels whenever you become mid-age. Um, and all of a sudden, I told my mom, I just my heart started racing for no reason. And I said, Mom, I said, I don't know what's wrong. I said, but all of a sudden, I've got this overwhelming feeling that something is wrong. But then the presence of the Lord started coming in that room. And we were sitting there eating. And I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you're with the Ritchie family, you never know where it's going to be at. It could be in Walmart. It could be at, at, at Golden Corral. It could be anywhere. But God came in and took care of every, all those feelings because he's bigger and better than anything that we go through. 
You know, when my son, he left and he went to the military, I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I had this peace that I knew God was going to take care of him. We get to see him this Wednesday, so I'm very excited for that. But some of the battles that those army men face is more than what we'll ever see in our lives. And I know he just went through training. But I watched a video of what they go through. And some of the things that they do while they're there is very overwhelming. Very overwhelming. The video showed that they were throwing, they were shooting live ammo above their heads. And if they raised their heads up so far, the ammo would have hit them. They threw live grenades and different things. When Michael would call home, they said, make sure you keep your head down. Don't make your sergeant come over and stick your head in the ground. Now, that's a life lesson for us. Keep our eyes on the Lord and don't make the Lord get our attention because He will get our attention one way or another. How many of us how many of us have went astray and done something that we knew we wasn't supposed to do, but we're thinking in our head, oh, I'll ask God for forgiveness later. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I'm sorry, honey. In this world, we got to ask for God's permission for everything. Even the time sometimes we need to go to Walmart. Because there's shootings in Walmart, there's shootings in food cities, there's shootings in Kroger's. We need to ask God and be obedient. Whenever that spirit quickens you to get out of somewhere or to go, you better go. Because you don't want to be caught up in something. You know, that, rem- that song reminds me of, a, of a, the Veggie Tales. There was a Veggie Tales story that was the monster. My God is bigger than the monster, than the boogeyman. That's right. And, you know, sometimes I'll go through my house, and I know it's kind of kiddish, and I'm in my 40s, but sometimes I'll sing that because my God is bigger than any boogeyman this world can give. He's bigger than anything that this world can give. And I thank God for that this morning. I thank God for his spirit. And if you can't feel it, then you need to come to the altar and come, like Brother Jerry was talking about, because the spirit is strong in this house this morning. Strong. Any of us could stay home. It's just, I was telling Pastor and, and Jerry the other night, I said, you know what? I said, I get up at the crack of dawn to go to work every, every Monday through Friday. I don't have a problem. I get up. Saturday mornings I get up. Come Sunday morning, the devil will fight me every single time. I'll sleep through my alarm. This morning he tried with a, ha- a headache, and I said, okay, nah, uh I took some ibuprofen, and I got ready. But he'll try to keep us from where God wants us to be. And it's at this time of our service, it's time to praise Him in our tithing and our offering. And this is a part of praise to give back to the Lord, to show Him how much we love Him. We thank Him for giving us and sustaining us in our financials. It's not just used for us to have a pretty building. It's used also for us to have the lights, the air conditioner, the heat in the wintertime. Many of us that went on mission trips know what it's like over in the third world countries they don't have what we have here i went into the villages where you were walked into a home and they had the dirt floors and the woman was so proud to just have a house over that dirt floor and she would be sweeping and you would be coughing because all the dust flying all over but she was proud why don't we take pride like that we got more than anybody else in this world does and we're spoilt rotten Sometimes God has to take us down to show us what we have. But he said, just give to me, and I can, ex- I can exceed it above and beyond what you ever think. Has any of us went starving giving our tithes? No. God made a way. Have any of us went out without, without electricity? When the moment the electricity was going to be shut off, God made a way for that light bill to be paid or that water bill to be paid because you were obedient to the word. The word says sometimes that we have not because we ask not. And I'm paraphrasing. And I know the word also says that God knows before we ask. But also, one time I was asking God, you knew I needed this. Why did I have to ask you? Because he's our father and he wants us to ask. As a mother, sometimes I know my children need something. Or my husband knows that I need something. But what do I do? What he wants me to do is just to ask. And whenever I ask... They give it, or we give it to our children. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer.
Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for your wonderful presence this morning, Father. God, we thank you, God, for the message you've gave us this morning, God, that you are bigger and better than anything that we go through, Father. And God, we pray, God, for this offering this morning, God, that you'll use it for the uplifting of your kingdom, God. Help us, God, that we can do more for you, give more for you, God, not just financially, but physically and mentally, Father. And God, I pray, God, that you'll use this uh, offering for the uplifting of your kingdom and for your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was born. this morning. Amen. My, 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 what a sweet spirit here. What a sweet presence the Lord has showed up. Amen. He did what he said he'd do. Amen. He said, we're two or three together in his name. He said, I'll show up in the midst. Amen. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. If you can stand with me this morning. Got a little thought this morning the Lord gave me. Can we make our praise team uh, let them know how much we appreciate them this morning uh, leading us into the presence of a living God? Amen. Wow. I like that little song they sang. It's not a little song, I guess, but they said they put him in a tomb and they rolled a stone and it said they thought they'd done away with him. They thought, but on the third day he come up out of the grave. Amen. And is alive forevermore. Wow. There is a presence here this morning. We don't want to get too far ahead of the Lord. We want him to do what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. My. <laughs> All right. If you got your Bibles, turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting at verse 1, a very famous passage of Scripture. We're going to try to get into that this morning. Uh, good to see everybody out. I'd like to welcome you to Mount Vale. Amen. I want to thank everybody who pitched in last Sunday and kept this thing rolling while me and Jerry and Jimmy went to Georgia to try to, well, they went to learn how to operate cameras and switchers and computers, and I just drove because y'all know I'm a low-tech man in a high-tech world, <laughs> so I would talk some and try to pick up on some, but they should they could have been talking Spanish to me. It wouldn't have mattered, so I'd say, okay, yeah, that's cool, man. That's great. <laughs> So, but anyway, the, uh, I think uh, all that jumped in, I know Alan preached and, and, and the praise team and, and Madison and all in the back, Michelle. So we just uh, thank everybody for pitching in and helping out while we uh, took off. And uh, our pastor's back. He got back last night. Uh, we went down, picked him up, as Jerry said. And so he's back in town. So um, thank God they had a good, safe journey and a good trip. But um, don't forget, August 10th, 11th, and 12th, our revival nights are coming up. Amen. We got Jenny Brown, we got John Carter, and we got Tommy Bates will be here Friday night. So invite somebody, and, and I'll just give you some fair warning. If you're coming to see Tommy, you might ought to get here early <laughs> because it usually fills up pretty quick if they know he's in the area. Amen. So uh, 
And uh, so, but anyway, that's just a little heads up. And, and if you want to, especially if you want your seat that you always sit in. <laughs> so it might be, it, it, if somebody is sitting in your seat, don't get mad. Just thank God somebody's there. Amen. Amen. So with all that being said, we're going to jump into this word real quick, if you will. And uh, we may or may not get done with it. It's up to the Lord. But uh, anyway, we know we're, we, we have a time frame here if you're new in here. And it's, uh, it's, uh, we get out at 930 because uh, Sunday school comes in. <laughs> Amen. The youth come in. But anyway, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it said, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal and a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose and a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow and a time to keep silence and a time to keep to speak. That's a hard part in learning how to when to keep silent. And <laughs> so it is for me. I'm sorry. But it's a time to keep silence and a time to speak. It says it's a time to love and a time to hate and a time of war and a time of peace. If you can, pray with me and pray for me this morning. Lord, we come to you today, God. We thank you for the move of your spirit in this house. We thank you that your Holy Ghost power fell in here this morning, God. And we're continually asking you, God, to continue to move in this service, God. Anoint me, Father God. Anoint my lips of clay. Speak to me and through me, not of the wisdom of men, God, but divine power and revelation of the Holy Ghost, God. Anoint your word. Let it go forth this morning. Do your work today, Father God. And Lord, we ask you, God, to be with your people today, Father Lord. God, Continue to move in this house. Continue to look, to save and to sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost in this place, God. Heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free in this house, God. Lord, we're asking you, God, to move like never before, Father Lord. And God, we come to you today, God, giving you all honor and glory and praise. And everybody saying, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated if you would like. The title of my message today is Time. And we, as you begin to see in the passage, Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon's wrote, writing this, and he begins to talk about there's a time for everything. There's a time for growing. There's a time for healing. There's a time for hurting. There's a time for planting. There's, there's a time for everything in its place, and everything has a time. And we in our society today look at time very structurally. We have clocks on the walls. There's one back there that tells me when I got to hush almost. <laughs> so, but there's time. We're always wondering wondering what time it is sometimes and I've got a very bad habit especially when I was in the workforce I would always check my watch because we had schedules and things and and my wife would be on vacation and I'd be looking at the clock she says you got somewhere to be I said no but it's just a habit because we're always looking and worrying about the time and even today we worry about the time some of us are worried about what time our favorite tv show comes on when's Andy coming on he comes on at five seven what we we're looking at time and I want to talk a little bit about time today because there's one thing about time and a few things we're going to dive into here just a little bit to to see about time and I may be more teachy than preachy this morning but I want us to get a hold of this because I think in the body of Christ sometimes we allow time to slip away and we allow time to 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 move in its own place and to and to and to miss a timing sometimes how many know that timing is 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 really what matters come on now even in the business world and even in the real world you look out and you you, you go to buy a car and the interest rates are two percent that's the greatest time come on now you go to buy a car and it's 17 percent you miss the timing come on now and, and, and we see that we're always judged and based on time if you will how many's ever worked in a factory where you where you were based on your time time. Come on. You had so much to put out at so much. And then if you got above that, we used to call that piecework. I don't know what they really call it now. You made more money. If you put out 100 units in 10 minutes and you put out 110 and you got extra money because they wanted you to work harder. It was an incentive in itself. But we were based on time. And even I remember working in businesses and factories and things. And we had engineers that would come time us. How fast did it take you to do that? How long does it take you to produce that? But today I want to talk about the time that God has given us. And how many know that when you get older, I thought about this message as the Lord began to lay it on my heart. When we get older, time becomes more valuable. When I was 20, it didn't matter. I had, to work, I, had, I had the rest of my life and my mind to live. But as I progress through these years, I'm beginning to look back and understand I probably got more behind me than I got ahead of me. 
Come on now. Time is, is, in its essence, time is short. How many know time is short? Time is not really, even, you say, well, some people live to be 100. Compared to eternity, time is short. The Bible teaches us about our own time on this earth. It says, it's, he, he said, our life is like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. It's like the grass that groweth and withereth away. I'm, I want us to talk this morning. I feel impressed upon my heart that we have to capture the time. We need to number our days, as David said. And, and, and I thought about that passage of scripture did you know a while back you could buy a clock and you could put your birthday in and they estimated you to live at 80 and every time every day rolled around it would take a day off and let you know how many days you got left don't buy that clock <laughs> don't buy that clock you can do it yourself there's 365 days a year and if you're so far from where you are to 80 you can tell you how many days you got left I did that. Don't do that. That messes your life. <laughs> but don't do that. And really, in essence, if we really look at it, we understand that really time is short in its own self. And, and, and we got to get a I just feel this pressed upon my heart because I believe in any moment that Jesus could come back. I believe in any moment that the sound of the trumpet could come. I believe right now we're living, if we're not in the midst of the last days, we're on the edge of the last days. And it's a time-sensitive moment for the church. And it's a time-sensitive moment for for people. I was praying about that this morning, coming down the road, and it kept rolling over my spirit. You see it, maybe not on TV as much as you do in normal churches, but there's a pressure, and there's an essence, and there's a, there's a, uh, the word I'm looking for, there's a, there's a, a spotlight shined on trying to get people ready for the coming of the Lord, because time is short, and time is about to roll up. Oh, my Lord, I felt my help roll up here. You know why the devil's fighting on every corner? You know why the, the, the evil has just vomited itself upon the world? because the devil himself knows his time is about to run out. The devil himself knows it's about to wrap up and he's doing everything he can to drag people back to a place called hell. But I come by to tell him one day there's coming a man named Jesus. His time is about to show up. His time when he splits the eastern skies and comes back for his church. The church is right now focusing, as you see, more and more. I'm telling you, I'm going to churches. I've been to a couple other churches. And the emphasis and the focus is on getting ready people, getting people ready for the coming of the Lord. There was a time in the church when it was all about money. The prosperity gospel spread for decades, but now there's a shift because we see that the time is drawing nigh. We see that the time is at hand. I come by to encourage somebody in this house watching Facebook, whatever. You need to get your life ready. You need to get your things under the blood. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and serve him until he calls you home because this world is about to wrap up. This world is about to be finished. Jesus Christ in his time, he will split the eastern sky my little four-year-old granddaughter asked me the other night she said well is the world going to end I said well I'll tell you one thing I didn't want to dishearten her but I said Jesus is coming back Jesus is coming back. This old world will end one day. This old world will pass away. The Bible tells us it will be here no more. And too many times we put all, my Lord help me, I'm trying to go. I This may be a two-parter because I'm running out of time already. We put as the church, we've put emphasis and focus on both things that don't really matter. We spend time on things that don't really matter. My phone's back there charging up. Anybody got a phone? Hold it up real quick. We spend way too much time. Come on. Now, some of us old people, it's low tech. We don't spend as much as some of the new people. But I even catch myself sitting across the dinner table with my wife looking. Both of us are like, come on. We spend too much time in things that are not profitable. Maybe that's the right word. That are not profitable. Time is short. Can I tell you, you cannot add pages back to the calendar? How many would like to go backwards? How many would like to go backwards physically? <laughs> I told somebody, they said, would you like to go back when you was 18? I said, no, but I sure would like to feel like it. I want to still have the, 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 the wisdom that I gained going through that stuff, but I sure would like to feel like I was in 18. And you know, it, it, time is short and you can't add it. There used to be an old song, if I could put time in a bottle. Well, you can't put time in a bottle. We use an old phrase, I'd like to make it, we'll make up time, no. Once that time's gone, today is gone. Once you step out of here, when 9.30 rolls around, you'll never be 9.30 again at this day. It's gone. 
And I'm afraid too many times in Christendom, if you will, we focus way too much upon the wrong things in the wrong time. And I know there's a time and a season for everything, but I believe the season and the time is rolling up in this place that Jesus is coming and we better get our lamps filled and we better get our lamps trimmed. We better have enough oil because one day the bridegroom's coming. One day the bridegroom's about to show up and we better be ready. Because once that time's gone, it's gone. Time is fleeting. Time is fast. Time is quick. How many, how many can testify that seems like time's running faster and faster every day? Can I tell you this? Uh, I, I, it, it is. I believe it is. I, there's no doubt. How many knows it's, we're almost eight months into this year already. Half this year's gone. And it seems like we just got started. Because time is fleeting, time is moving, time stops for no man. Time is, is moving on, is marching on, if you will. Time is passing. It's like sands in the hourglass. First John 2 and 17 and it says, The world passes away and the lust thereof, but the time is fleeting. I had a little note here and I'm going to share it because I think it's kinda, it brings to where we think about time. Sometimes we try to get time and try to make up time and try to go back in time through makeup, through uh, anybody ever dye their hair? Somebody's raising their hand real low. Somebody's going, no, would that look like we're trying to add time back. <laughs> Amen. Remember when you was young, you could slick it back. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to put some more hair back in the spot back here, but it ain't working. I was at the hair, uh, cutting place the other day, and that lady put the mirror back there. She said, how's that look? I said, you cut too much off? She said, where? I said, right back there. <laughs> she was a young girl. She was like, uh, so I'm just kidding. But we would like to add time back. But I'm telling you, time is fleeting. Time is leaving us. Where time is slipping away in itself. And, and, and things that we do to try to add time back to us and can I say this and be nice? How many ever seen an older lady try to dress like a teenager? Come on, she's trying to add time. She's trying to make up time. She's trying to get back to when she was young. How many seen men that do the same thing now? Come on, men color their hair too. Did you know that? I didn't know that for a long time. As you can tell, I don't color nothing. <laughs> and we'd like to take the wrinkles away, but it don't work like that because time is fleeting. Time is passing. If I should have named this message, time is of the urgency because we're in a time when this world is uncertain in itself. And think about it, even time is uncertain. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. The Bible says don't boast in yourself for tomorrow for you know not what the day may bring forth. Can I say this, and I think you should do this. We lay up retirement thinking we're going to retire one day, but the fact of the matter is we may never make it. It's uncertain. We've seen people leave this world way too young. It's uncertain. We don't, the Bible says we're not promised tomorrow. But you know what? We live life like we do, and we should. Don't, I, don't, I don't think God wants us to be in a corner hugged up saying, Oh, God, I'm not going to make it. I ain't going out of the house. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Because that's not the way he designed us to live. But the fact of the matter is, it is uncertain. How many know it's people leave early? Little ones, old ones, young ones. It's uncertain. How I many you know in 2020 we would have never thought for an instance what happened in this country? It's uncertain. It has no uh, certainty of it. The only certain thing about time is, as the Bible says, that once it's appointed unto man to die, I've got a timetable set for me somewhere in the heavens. As God knows, I don't want to know. I used to think I wanted to know, but I think if you wanted to know, it'd drive you nuts. If it said August the 26th, 19, 2052, you're going to leave, you'd be, it'd, it'd drive you crazy the closer it got. But the fact of the matter is, time is of the essence. It's uncertain. It's fleeting. It's short. It's passing. It's marching on. In Proverbs there, Solomon was writing time. There's a time to live. There's a time to dance. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pluck up. There's a time in all this thing that Jesus begins to talk to us about. We, we talk about walking in time, and, 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 we, and, and, and even in itself, we see that time will come to us all if we, don't, if we understand that that appointed time is coming. 
whether we're rich, poor, young or old, that appointed time's coming. That's why the essence is here. That's why I believe the church is beginning to really get the passion for what Christ had a passion for, which is the lost and those that are hurting and those that are hung up and hooked up on everything. I come by to testify to the church today that it's time we be about the Father's business. It's time that we reach for the lost. It's time that we talk about Jesus in Walmart. It's time we stand on the corner and tell somebody about a man named Jesus. It's time for us to be the church and quit playing. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to be the church. It's time to gird up our loins, if you will. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of truth, our salvation, and the belt of truth, and shod our feet with the gospel of peace, picking up the shield of faith, grabbing the sword of the Spirit, and fight against the enemy. It's time. Woo, my goodness, for the church to be the church. It's time to quit patty caking. This is of the essence. This is of the urgency. It's time for us to understand in our own lives we got to get things right. In our own lives we got to get things ready. In our own lives we got to be prepared. And once we are doing that, we need to go out and reach for somebody else. Because time's wrapping up. Time is about to end. Any moment, I believe, the sound of the trumpet could take place. In any moment, I think God could rapture Jesus and come and rapture the church up out of this place. And you know, some days I pray for it. I know it's selfish, but I do. I'm thinking, Lord, if you'll just come, it'll be a whole lot better. And it will be. But Jesus has his own timetable on that. Time is so wrapped up in our, whole, our lives so much that we almost don't see it and we don't think about it. But don't you understand something this morning? It's time for the church to grab the essence and the urgency of what's happening in this world. It's time we stand up for what's right. And it's time we stand against what's wrong. It's time for the church, help me this morning, to quit watering down the gospel and preach it like the Bible says it. It's time, and we do it in love. It's time to love those people who are unlovable. Come on now. It's time for open arms, if you will, and allow people to come into the house because if we don't allow them to come into the house, then they'll never hear the word of God because I got news for you. Disney and Netflix is not telling them. Woo. That got real quiet. <laughs> My Lord, it's time. Solomon saying there's a time for everything and a time for every season. And I believe in my heart with this little message that it's a time for the church and the people of God to be getting ready for the coming of the Lord and helping other people, showing them where Jesus Christ is so that they can be ready. Think about this passage of Scripture that talked about the ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. You know what troubles me about that passage of Scripture? He's talking to church people. And what it says is, is that 50% is only going to make it. <laughs> if you look at it that way, half of them didn't make it. So it's time for us to make sure we're going to make it. It's time for us to fill our oil. It's time for us to trim our lamps, if you will. It's time we better get into the house of God every chance we get and get things right and get things under the blood. It's time for marriages to be put back together. It's time for people to get things under the blood that need to be under the blood because this time is wrapping up. And not only that, our own physical time may be drawing nigh. I thought about it. David told in Samuel, I believe it was 1 Samuel, he's talking to Jonathan and, and Saul's after David. And David says something that stuck with me for a long time time he told Jonathan he said I'm but one step between me and death but you know the truth of the matter is we're all like that we're one step to death we're one step to eternity we're one heartbeat to leave this world we're one car wreck to be gone we're one motorcycle accident to be taken out we're one just just we're just a step just a step too many times we think eternity lays out there, but it don't. It runs parallel with us, and we walk with eternity right beside us every moment of every day. There's some people in this world did not wake up this morning. There's some people in this world who died in a car wreck, and they left this world. There's some people today who will have heart attacks and strokes, and things will take them out. They're walking right now side by side with eternity. It's time for us to get serious, and it's time for us to get serious about our faith and about our walk with the Lord because we're not promised 
promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next day. We could step over, I could step over into this eternity when I walk out that door standing in this pulpit. The Lord could call me into eternity just like that. I knew a guy that was up singing in church. He said, well, you're in church. Surely the Lord won't take you out here. Come on. I knew a guy that was singing at his church, leading worship, had a heart attack. And really, he died. They brought him back. They revived him. He's got a testimony. But he was in the pulpit leading worship. Don't think for a moment that you've got to wait till you leave here. We're all right in this moment, if you will, of eternity side by side, walking with it. It's time for us to get ready, church. It's time for us to, 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 to get our, our lamps trimmed. It's time for us to fill our oils and be ready for the coming of the Lord. Can I say this? It's time for you to get some things under the blood that may hinder you from leaving this world or, or not leaving this world but stepping into the pearly gates. Wouldn't it be terrible to get up there and say, well, everything looks good, but one thing. That'd be terrible, wouldn't it? I heard a guy, I told it before, and I shared it a lot. A guy was, had a dream that he was getting caught up in the rapture, and everybody was going up, and he was going up, and he just stopped. And everybody was passing him, and he couldn't figure it out. And he looked down, and he said, hanging off my foot was a television, cell phone, a relationship, things that were holding him down. I come by and encourage somebody today, it's time to get some things under the blood and get some things behind you and washed out, if you will, and sanctified in your life so that you, when your time comes or my time comes, that we'll be able to stand before Jesus and he'll say, enter in thy good and faithful servant. The worst words anybody could ever hear is when he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. It's time is of the essence. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we're like I said earlier, we're living in the end times or right at it. And not only that, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. I've had family members leave this world way too early. We're not promised tomorrow. There's some people left today. And there's some people leave every day. You see wrecks on the highways, you don't know if they made it or not. Me and Jerry did a lot of traveling the last few, last week, I guess, the last week and a half or whatever. But you see wrecks all the time. You see near misses all the time. Just in a moment, just in a blink of an eye, we could be gone. I come by to encourage you, time is of the essence. And it's time for us to be ready. It's time for us as a church to be about the Father's business. We're in that time. It's time for the church. I, I'm trying to hush, but it's time for the church to begin to reach for the harvest. You don't have to be back behind this pulpit. They, they, I mean, they, we, anybody ever been to Bucky's, that new gas station? Good Lord, don't go there. We stopped at one on the way. Where's that at, Jerry? In Crossville? Right in that area? So that was like Dollywood in there. We stopped to use the restroom. I didn't think we was ever going to get out of there. Or find the restroom and get through to the rest of these. But the point is, you don't want to, you, you can't, you'll get tied up in all that stuff. And it's so, when we were time sensitive, we were trying to get to the airport to get Pastor and them. And I told Jerry, I said, you might as well call them, tell them we're going to be late because we're hung up here in this gas station. But time is important. Time is important. Standing all over this place. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. I'll close with this little thought. We're running out of time. So, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. If people could come back from eternity and talk to us, they would not be worried about how much money they made. They would not worry about how big a house they have. They would not worry about what kind of car they drive or what kind of clothes they wore. They would just say, it's time to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. And if you are ready, be about the Father's business to help other people get ready. They wouldn't stand back and tell us, well, I wish I'd invested in Coke and I'd invested in Dollywood or I'd invested in whatever. They would say, hey, take time. 
take time first and foremost to your relationship with God. And most of the time, people on their deathbed said, I wish I'd have spent more time with my family. Take time. Time is of the essence. Time, there's a purpose under heaven. And there's a time, there's every season, every time. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you that you've given us this time. Don't ever let us squander this time or waste this time. Help us not to be wasteful in the time that you've given us, God. Help us as men and women of God, if, if, if we don't have things right, that we make things right. And if anybody's watching via Facebook and live stream and are in this house and you're not sure that you would be ready if Jesus called you into eternity, it's time to get ready. It's time to focus upon him and ask him for forgiveness and to come live in your heart. Lord, help us this day not to be wasteful of this precious commodity, this precious time that you've given us, God. Help us, as David's word said, to number our days, to know that we are only allotted an amount of time on this world and everything we can do for you and for your kingdom, God, is important. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to open these altars up this morning. If there's anybody in this house that don't know Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior, today's your day. The Spirit's drawing you can come. If you've got things you need to get under the blood, you need to come. Amen. Maybe you've been here all your life and grew up all your life, but there's things you need to, to get right with God. Today's your day. Amen. If anybody needs prayer this morning, these altars are open. For anything, we want to we wanna pray with you because time is of the essence. Time is it's, it's an urgency in the heavensly, in the spiritual realm. And we're about to leave. We're about to we about to blow this pop stand, as they say. <laughs> I know it's hillbilly vernacular, but that's what it is. One lady wrote a book. book said, when I hear the toot, I'm on a scoot. When the horn blows, I'm on a scoot, or something like that. But it's time for us to get ready, and it's time for us to tell people about Jesus, so that they can be ready. I'm going to say this, I'm going to hush. I tell people all the time, there's only two things that you can take to heaven. It's your worship and his people. That's it. You can't take cars, you can't take money, you can't take gold, you can't take reputations. It's your worship and people. It's the only thing that's going to be in heaven from this earth. So this morning, these altars are still open. If you'd like to come, Sister Becky's going to come close out for us. Uh, but just remember time is of the essence I like what it said there it said, I said I was going to hush do y'all know what clothes means to a preacher absolutely nothing you're up sister Peggy said nothing uh, I told that down there in Georgia and it messed up their pastor he said I was going to close he said but brother Philip said it don't mean nothing so I'm just going to go on he said <laughs> but we have to understand that there is a purpose and there is a time and it's time church that we be about the father's business if any time in the history of the church we're living, I, I'm trying to hush, but somebody needs to hear this. It, it don't have to be inside this house. It could be outside by your neighbors. It can be outside at Walmart. It can be, matter of fact, the harvest is out. You very seldom plant crops in the house. I mean, you, you might have a few little things in your house, but most of the time when you plant a big garden, it's outside the house. And that's where the harvest is. So anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank you for being here. And Sister Becky. Thank you, Brother Philip. It is good to be in God's house this morning. Um, early we will rise. It's hard, but we're here, and it's good. Um, don't forget Sunday schools at 930. If you do not have a Sunday school class, um, ask somebody. I know Brother Mike's back here. He's got his class over there in the back corner. Pastor's got one in Children's Church. Um, the youth is staying in here. So, um, And just don't, don't forget our morning service and our service tonight. 
God, be with us, Lord, as we just go into the worship and services with you, Lord. Help each and every person in this room or in by Facebook, God, that they still have time, God, to come into your house. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen and guide. Oh, God, we just love you and we just thank you so much, God, for your mercy and your grace. And just be with the people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.